Map fans, welcome back. Today we're looking at rule-based symbology in QGIS. And this was born out of a question from a student of mine who wanted to know how they could change both the shape and the color of symbols in QGIS. So that's what we're going to look at and let's get right into it. Today we're traveling by map to Central America seismic. We are going to be looking at volcanoes and here I've got a bunch of different volcanoes that spread over Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua and El Salvador. Let's have a quick look at the attribute table for our volcanoes layer. Always interesting, we've got volcano, we've got the number, name, location, we'll be using that and also the elevation. So at the moment, you can see that my volcanoes are styled uniformly. They have a single symbol. It's a red triangle. Pretty useful for a volcano. So let's double click on volcanoes and that will open up our properties. And here's our symbology. Now, one thing that we might want to do is to distinguish our volcanoes by elevation. And we could do that simply by going to graduated. So instead of having a single symbol, I'm going to use the drop down and go into graduated. In the graduated box, we have a bunch of different options. I'm going to choose the column that we're going to use to graduate our symbols, and that'll be elevation. We can change the symbol itself, the base symbol. Uh, we've got a legend format, which here you can see how that works. And we have the method. So we could choose color or we could choose size. Now if I go by size, I'm going to go from the size of 2 mil up to 8 mil. And I would like to classify this. And there we can see we have the symbol gradually getting bigger. Now this symbol area isn't really big enough to hold these symbols, but you get the idea. Our legend is going to look like this, and these are the values that it is running off. Now, our legend seems to be precise to four decimal places. I do not want that, so I'm going to hit trim, and that makes our legend look a lot neater. So I'm just going to apply this now. You can see in the background, our volcanoes have grown in size. So the very tall volcanoes are going to be big and the very small volcanoes or the very low altitude volcanoes are going to be small. So that's pretty good. That's how we can graduate by size. Now you might have already used graduated symbols in the past, which is fine. And you might be wondering where rule based symbology comes in. So if we double click on the volcanoes again, you can see that we've got this graduated symbology at the top. And if I drop that down again, we have the option of rule based. If I click on this, now we can see that we have rules that have been applied. And the rules are quite simple. If 11 is larger than or equal to 74 and 11 is smaller than this, then we're going to have this size, color, shape of symbol. That's very nice. I'm going to destroy these rules. I'm going to select all of them and just hit delete. And they have gone. Now if I apply that, what happens in the background? All of our volcanoes have gone. If I go back to single symbol, choose a simple marker, make it red, make it a triangle, and apply that, our volcanoes have returned. So that's good. So on the rule-based symbology, what I would really like to do Currently, I have no rules or no filter in this particular rule. So let's double click on it and see how this rule works. Up at the top, we have a label box. Now, this is just what you're going to call this rule. So I'm going to call this one El Salvador. And the filter that I'm going to use, I can apply using an equation. So if I hit the equation button, here we are in the expression string builder. So I would like to use a field. I'm going to use location. So I'll double click on that. Over on the right hand side, all unique pops up. So I'm going to hit that and we can see what values we've got in this field or column in our attribute table. So I want our location in this case to equal El Salvador. 
I'll double click El Salvador. Okay, that. So this is looking pretty good. I think this is how I want it to be. And I'm going to okay it. And if I apply this in the background, have a look at what happens to the volcanoes in Nicaragua. Gone. And currently we've only got volcanoes showing in El Salvador. Very interesting. Now we could copy this. I'm going to copy this rule and then I'm going to paste it below. And if I double click on this rule, I can change this to Guatemala. And if I go into my expression builder, I can also get rid of El Salvador and go into fields and values, location, get all unique and go to Guatemala. Now you might notice that I'm always opening up the fields and values, always highlighting the field I'm interested in and going for all unique. If you use a double click, it means that you will not make typos. And if I was to spell Guatemala wrong here, this rule would not work. Anyway, let's OK that. That looks fine to me. And let's apply it. And in the background, now we've got volcanoes back in Guatemala. So you can see how this is working. We're just building a rule for each country that has volcanoes in it. Now, there is one thing that you can do. Um, in here, we'll just put catch all. And instead, this is going to be a catch all for all other features. And I'm just going to OK that and apply. And you can see that all the other volcanoes that haven't been caught by the rules are actually appearing as this blue circle. Quite useful. So that makes you know that you have caught all the features that are in that particular feature layer. Now I'll get rid of the catch all for now. I'm just going to focus on El Salvador and Guatemala. And if I just make this a little bit bigger, if we hit the count features button, you will see that we can count how many features are in each and we can see if there are any duplicates. Some rules may overlap and you may get duplicate features. So with Guatemala, instead of having a red triangle, I would like to make Guatemala a blue triangle. Let's go in here and change you to blue. OK. And I'll OK that. Now you can see that our Guatemalan volcanoes are blue. Excellent. And I'd also like to add in our size that we had earlier. So the taller volcanoes or the, uh, the volcanoes with more altitude are going to be larger than the other ones. So I'm going to right click on El Salvador and go to refine current rule and add ranges to rule. Now in the ranges, this might look familiar. Um, I'm going to choose the column and go for elevation as we did before. For the symbol, you'll see it's defaulted to a circle and I do not want that. I want this to be red and I want it to be a triangle. OK. And instead of color, we are going to be adding ranges according to size. My precision is going to be zero. I'm going to trim those. And the size is going to begin at two millimeters and go up to eight. Now if I hit the classify button, there we are. We can see what our legend is going to look like. And I'm going to OK that. Aha. Now we have extra rules. So these are like child rules. If this El Salvador is a parent rule, then below we have child rules. And let's just apply that and see what it looks like. You can see now that our El Salvador volcanoes have been made larger according to their altitude or smaller. And our Guatemalan ones have not. If we wanted to do that for our Guatemalan ones very quickly, we could go in and do exactly the same thing. I'll just do all of this over. There is quite a bit of clicking in this, but the results can be quite powerful in the end. So can be worth it. Let's go for size, precision zero, trim. 
and pacify. Okay, okay, that. And there we are. Our Guatemalan volcanoes are styled by size as well, or by elevation. Now, one thing that you may find whilst you're doing this, and one thing to look out for, is symbol levels. So here we have our parent rules, and we've got our child rules below them. Now, if I was to change the color of this parent rule, I want my simple marker to be bright yellow. Okay, that, and apply. Now you can see that nothing happens, but sometimes when you're playing around with this, you may find that you get an output that looks like, just go in and do this quickly and then explain what's happening afterwards. You may sometimes find that you get an output similar to this. So you can still see the parent and the children are underneath, unfortunately, and it looks very messy. Now, this is due to symbol levels, and we can alter our symbol levels by double-clicking on volcanoes, going down to the bottom right, and having a look at symbol levels. Now, you're going to want to make this box bigger, usually. You can see here that we've got all our symbols. The higher the number, the later the symbol will be drawn. So these zero level symbols are going to be drawn first, and then anything with a higher number, for example, El Salvador with a number of one, is going to be drawn on top of them. So I can flatten this out again by moving El Salvador back to zero and applying that. And you can see that this yellow for all the El Salvadorian volcanoes, one fixed size, that has sunk back down to the bottom. So I think that's all I wanted to say for now about rule-based symbology. It is something that I'm just getting into, so if you have any tips or you find out any quirks, please let me know. You can, of course, get in touch via the comments. I always like reading the YouTube comments. And you could also hit me up on Twitter as well. Thanks very much for all the recent subscriptions. Don't forget that I have a new online course coming out very soon. And if you'd like to sign up for that, there are still some free coupons left for that. So the first few that sign up will get the course for free and those thereafter will get a huge 75% discount. Now that course is on ArcGIS Online as opposed to QGIS, but don't worry, you don't have to buy any software. It's all free. We're going in via the developer account and it'll just help you to expand your GIS knowledge. So if you're interested in that, please have a look at the description below. There's a link to the form, just fill that in, and then I'll be in touch once the course is released. Thank you ever so much for watching, and don't forget, happy mapping.